In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, 
by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the for those who own property or houses would sell them bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles and they were distributed to each according to need the word of the lord
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey his commandments, for the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. And not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe you because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen. And a week ago, there was one among us, maybe more than one, expecting that perhaps I would say the Greek call and response. Yes, perpetua, you. And so now, Christos Anesti. So she came in Wednesday night after Mass, and her mom said, Father Steve, Perpetua has something to say to you. And she said, Christos Anesti. And I said, Aletos Anesti. Because it's true. Okay, I don't speak Greek, but I do speak English, so I'm going to say it one more time. It's not the last time you're going to hear it. Christ is risen. We opened the, we opened the window so the people outside who have no hope will say, what are those crazy people chanting about, screaming about? Oh, Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. I love this opening prayer, the collect. It collects the intentions. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, that's what we did a week ago. The recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people who have made our own. That's all the baptized. How many baptized here? All right. Little, is it Augustine David? Just another hour or so, buddy. You're going to be a pagan no longer, all right? Kindle the faith of the people who you've made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. No, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. So let me say that again. May they grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood 
they have been redeemed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. And you said amen. It is true, right? How many are here? I know Alianza is not here, but any other who were baptized at the Easter Vigil in here? All right. Alexis, all right. So she was baptized, and there were three others who were baptized. So she is now a daughter of God, a beloved daughter. Now you get to come in. Let's applaud. Let's welcome her, congratulate her. She's never coming back. <laughs> now that I did that. <laughs> Anyone who received Easter sacraments made a profession of faith. Did you stand up? Hold on, stand up. You got to stand up. How many, who else? All right, there we go. Everyone who, who received Easter sacraments, whether you made a profession of faith or you were completed your sacraments of initiation, please stand. Let's just honor them and congratulate them. And, and can I just say that at the Easter Vigil, if you were not here and the, the live stream didn't work for some reason, there was hooting and hollering uh, of excitement. And I love that because it's a big deal to become a son or daughter of God with a promise of life eternal. That is the best thing that happens to any person. You might say, well, my first child or marriage or the priesthood. No, that's all icing on the cake. It is our rebirth in Christ that changed everything, gives us hope of heaven and hope here below. I love this, this particular gospel. It's said every second Sunday of Easter, which is Divine Mercy Sunday, and for obvious reasons. Thomas, this is John's account. Thomas wasn't there when Jesus appeared to the 10. Judas, of course, had despaired. The other 10 were there, and he appeared to them. And he showed them his hands and his side. He, he knows that, that we actually need evidence. I, I love, I think it was yesterday or Friday, uh, there at the, I think it was Friday, at the, at the seashore, and Jesus ate something. It's not like he was a, a ghost. He actually consumed bread and fish. And he offered, have you caught anything? Right? All of these accounts are so beautiful. But the Lord is, is raised, and he appeared to them, they were discouraged. They were huddled together for fear of the Jews. And Jesus came in. What does he say? He says what every person, if he or she is thinking, always wants to hear. Peace be with you. We, we sometimes think that we want to be happy. Yeah. But what does that even mean? It really is rooted in this peace that he offers, right? That sense of peace interiorly. Not to think about the past or the present or the future with anxiety or shame or regret or fear. <sighs> or in your home. And I know some of your homes are not always peaceful. You want it there too, don't you? And in your relationships and in the workplace and in the world. In the world you will have trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world. The world is but... <clears throat> like a life of a gnat compared to us who will live forever. That's worth celebrating. I hope you celebrated this week. If you didn't, there's still time. Eight days we've been celebrating. This is the octave. That's why the baptismal font, in what font you have been reborn, octagonal, the great baptistry at St. John Lateran outside the church, which is, makes good sense, actually, because you need to be baptized before you can come into the church. I'm not criticizing the fact that we have it in the church, but octagonal, we gather every eighth day. We count the first day, that's Sunday, and then the eighth day is Sunday again. And I just want to thank you. Can I, don't let this go to your head. Just hear it from the heart of a pastor. I love... And I'm grateful that you gather with me every eighth day. Sometimes you're someplace else. But there are so many parishes 
where people, eh, it's a sunny day out there. Well, sunny days are days to give God thanks, and that's why you come, to give him thanks for hope for this life and the next, and that peace which surpasses human understanding. So keep on coming, although next week, not here at Lansing Catholic. Three masses over there on Sunday morning. That's all we're going to offer. And I'm so grateful to Lansing Catholic for helping us, allowing us to use their space. We're not going to have to be in the gym or the Mercy Hall. We'll be in the Mercy Hall for the weekday masses, but on the weekends, three masses, 8, 9.30, and 11.30. And no evening mass either Saturday or Sunday. So it'll be over there. I'll put a sign out here, and we got it on the electronic sign. Some of you will come here dutifully, and you'll realize, all right, all the city of Lansing, and in fact, the whole country is under construction. <laughs> so is the church, all right? And that'll remind you when, when you come down Michigan Avenue and you say no trees, okay, we have to go someplace else to go to the tree of life, okay? Uh, Jesus is the tree of life. And uh, so next week, eight, the last Mass, and I see you, David Killian, right there, care. You're going to make your first communion this coming Saturday. This will be the last Mass here until we open it up again. Any other who are going to make their first communion on Saturday morning? All right, we got one right over here. Let's just have them stand up and let's just pledge our prayers for them. All right. Thank you. Have a seat. We, we will pray for them. And uh, this is Divine Mercy Sunday, and perhaps there's some sinners in our midst. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. It's all of us. And he is more ready to forgive than we are to sin. So beautiful. This afternoon at St. Mary Cathedral at 2.30, there's going to be a Divine Mercy chaplet uh, and a prayer service and then opportunity for confession. But the indulgence, which is applicable today, if you, you venerate the, the image or you pray the Divine Mercy chaplet, any confessions 20 days before today or 20 days after this would count for that confession. So you don't have to go on the day itself. But I'll be there to hear confessions at, at the cathedral. And there's other places, I think St. Peter's in Eaton Rapids, St. Thomas Aquinas, and many other places where you can make uh, confession and, and go to the Divine Mercy Chaplet, or Divine Mercy Service. Thomas happily was not there. I say this every year because it needs to be repeated. I'm very happy he wasn't there. And I'm very glad that John did not white out his question, his doubts. They said, we saw his hand and we saw his side. And what does he say? I will not believe unless I see and I stick my finger into his hand, my hand into his side. I will not believe. And the Lord made him wait eight days. And when he got there that eighth day, you heard it again. He says, peace be with you. How dare you doubt? Get out of here. You're not worthy of me. You're like another Judas. No. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come. 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 Uh, can you imagine the shame that Thomas felt? How could I have doubt? Uh, uh, he knows. He's calling me because he knows I said that. Have you ever said that about anything you've done or said? You don't have to admit it. I know you have. We're all Thomas, aren't we? I was talking to Rich Bud, and he says, you know why they call him Didymus? Because he's our twin. We're like him. Those two who were baptized. You know what Jesus says? Not just you, but you. We're blessed. When he showed him, Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Do you believe because you've seen? More blessed are those who believe who have not seen. This is it. I was baptized as a little baby. I didn't have any choice. You guys made a choice. It's beautiful. It's not, it's not more valid because of that, but you've made a choice based on the witness of the community. And that's our job. To go, I'm going to say, go in peace, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll chant it at the end. Don't go yet. Take Jesus with you, okay? That's what we do. We, we take Jesus to the world.
I don't know what questions you have in your heart or what family members have questions or are wrestling. I was talking to a man after, after the last Mass and he had a broken heart. I, I wonder if his family members are maybe wrestling with doubts. But the Lord allows doubts and questions and fears and anxieties because he wants to be the answer to those questions and, answer, or, and anxieties and fears. And we need to articulate them. So don't be afraid when your children say, I'm not sure it's true. You can say, neither was Thomas. Just let that stir in their hearts. Say, take it to him. Complain to him. Now, if you're going to complain to God, make sure you listen to him. I, I, I know some people seem to be on play, kind of the old tape recorder. They play all their complaints, but they never put the record on to listen to what God has to say in response to that. The Lord wants us to be in communion with him. That's why he did what he did and why he gave us the great gift of the Eucharist. He wants us to know his peace, to live in his peace, to be signs of his peace and light and love and everything that is good. For Christ is risen. Let's rise now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As God's sons and daughters through our baptism, we turn now to our Heavenly Father with all our needs. That on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the Church will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy. We pray to the Lord. For those burdened by sin, that the grace of the resurrection would move them to receive God's mercy in the sacrament of reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those trapped in confusion or doubt, that they may be filled with the truth and light of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially Gabe Radke, Robert Manor, Ann Stevenson, and Mike Ball, that God will show them his healing grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions listed in our petition book and in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved dead, especially Margot Cascaria, that they may experience the joy of the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you indeed that your son appeared to Thomas and to the the entire 11, 
And on that first Sunday, establish the great gift of reconciliation. That those who confess their sins can have confidence that they've been forgiven. We entrust ourselves and all those we love to you and ask for an outpouring of grace that we might live as signs of faith, hope, love, and peace to all those who know us, that they might come to believe through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, 
Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water in the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant, Margot Cascarilla, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and rests in the sleep of peace. Grant her, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.
through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Be seated for a few moments. As I mentioned in the homily, next Sunday and for the foreseeable future till probably end of August or maybe even into September, we'll be over on Sundays, 8, 9.30 and 11.30 at Lansing Catholic High School. Um, it holds about 285, so the, the four masses that we currently have would fit if we were perfectly divided uh, between the three masses. We'll see how that goes as time passes. I think you're gonna probably 1130 or the eight, the challenge is gonna be for the nine. Yeah, the, the sound system needs to be replaced, doesn't it? Hello, hello, yeah. Good, it will be. Do you see the, the colored version of St. Hippolytus or Hippolyta over in that corner? So in 1981, when this was done with carpeting in the, the aisles, all of the statues were kind of beiged down. And so the color will be returned to the statues, to their original color. That's one of the efforts, plus will be new lighting. I know you love these lights. They just screams church, don't they? Well, those are going to be changed as well, and then this sanctuary will have new pews and we'll have room for more. It's, I'm excited about it, but it's kind of like, I mean, it's kind of like a liturgical Holy Saturday, right? It's just going to be saws, and I guess Holy Saturday is kind of a quiet day, but there'll be a lot of work being done. But I'm so grateful that we're going to be able to be over at Lansing Catholic. It's a beautiful space, uh, and I'm, again, thankful for their generosity in letting us use the space. This, if you're nostalgic about coffee and donuts, this is going to be the last here corporately for a while, all right? So go over, have a donut, a coffee, chat, and uh, we just are not able to figure out how to do that over there wisely and well, efficiently. So take a copy of the bulletin that has all of the other changes. Daily masses and confessions will be in Mercy Hall. And uh, there's also, I think, Sheets that indicate who paid for the Easter flowers, donated money for that at the various exits, and I'm grateful for that. Please do pray for the process of renovation and for all of those who are going to be frustrated. We won't have a Saturday evening or a Sunday evening Mass. That's going to be hard. If you're going someplace else, we'd, we'd love to have you continue to support us in terms of your giving, even if you're not able to come to one of the three Masses in the morning. Everybody has to move. No one gets their preferred time. So 8, 9.30, and 11.30. Um, tomorrow morning we celebrate. It was moved because the Annunciation fell within Holy Week. Tomorrow will be the Annunciation. It's also the time of the total eclipse. It might be the end of the world. I mean, people are talking about it, but uh, those who were baptized, you ready, right? And we go to confession. Uh, 2.30 at the Cathedral Divine Mercy Chaplet, or I think it's maybe at 3 at St. Thomas. I'm not sure, but you can check their websites. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he by whose redeeming work you have received the gift make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, hallelujah.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the beginning of the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, He gave power to become children of God who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth, and beheld His glory, glory as of the only begotten Son from the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Saint Michael the Archangel.